Hello, welcome to Splash Talk. In this video, we are going to talk about how IT teams of educational institutions can easily deploy and manage remote access to lab computers through a centralized admin console. We will cover deployment of Splashtop for remote labs, inviting students, grouping students on lab computers and managing their access permissions, creating and managing remote access schedules, and then logs. Let's first dive into how to deploy Splashtop for remote labs. Go to your my.splashtop console in the Management tab and go to Deployment. Here you can create your deployment package. When creating the deployment package, you have the option of specifying various default settings for the streamer, including computer name, security settings, sound redirection, auto launch behavior, and many more. You can read more about this in detail in the administrator guide listed on our remote labs page here. Once you've created the deployment package, you can distribute it to your team by sharing a link through which it can be downloaded or downloading the streamer and then sharing it through Dropbox, email, and so on. The streamer can also be installed silently via command line, group policy, Jump Pro, and Microsoft Intune. Details on the various deployment options are listed in the guide. Splashtop also supports integration with single sign-on with identity providers like Azure AD, Okta, ADFS, JumpCloud, OneLogin, and others. Details on how to set up authentication using SSO can be found in the guide as well. Let's now move on to inviting users to the Splashtop team. They could be faculty, students, or fellow IT team members. You can assign different roles to these users accordingly. For example, IT team members who need to control overall users and computers can be admins. Faculty members who need to administer specific user and computer groups can be group-specific admins. Students who will only use remote access can be members. For easy management and access permission control, users and computers can be grouped and given access permissions as required. You can create three types of groups. For example, you can group users by role or by department. Group computers by lab, the OS they are running, or the applications they have. I'll go ahead and create a CTE lab group. Once you create the group, you can add the computers and the users to the group. Another way to group and manage users' access permissions are through here. Clicking the gear icon and then Assign User Group will allow you to add them to a group. I select the CT group and there you go. The user has been added to the group. Also, if you have your group set up beforehand, you can assign groups right when you invite users from here. To assign users access permissions, click on the gear icon again and then access permission. You can also provide access permissions by group rather than by user. You can choose which computers or group of computers the user will have access to. These permissions grant all time access to computers Whereas scheduling access, which we will go through in the next section, enables access only in the given time slot. They can be used together since permissions are not overridden. So if a user requires only scheduled access, the permission here should be set to no computers. Now let's look at how you schedule remote access to your lab computers. Before you start scheduling, Go to Management Settings to make sure you are in the right time zone. Then you go to Scheduled Access. And create a resource. This is basically the computers that form your lab. You can select the computer or computer groups you'd like to create the schedule for. 
you can either create the schedule later or let's go ahead and create it now. Let's say every Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. You can choose if you want the session to forcefully disconnect when time is up and you can select how long before the session ends you want to issue the warning to the user. Then I add in the user group or I can also include email addresses here. That's all. Now I create the schedule. What that means is the students in the CT Lab 1 group can access the computers I added in the group only at the scheduled time, that is noon to 1 p.m. Splashtop for Remote Labs comes with additional features to prevent certain actions by students on the remote lab computers. If you go to Management Settings, you can choose to allow multiple students to connect to the same computer simultaneously or one student remoting to multiple computers simultaneously, students being able to disconnect other sessions and being able to reboot and restart computers and the Splashtop streamer. For remote sessions, all details including names and IP addresses of the devices involved, time, duration, files that are transferred during a session, and so on are recorded. And that's all that I wanted to show you in this video. You can access all the resources and info about remote labs by going to splashup.com slash remote hyphen labs. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.